Hello and welcome to Rider Guider. I'm Neil. Thanks for joining me. A bit of a controversial one today. Look at me surrounded by all these helmets. The beautiful brand. The daddy. The R.I. It's a wow helmet. Has been, for me, for 30 years. That makes me feel quite old. My first R.I. crash helmet was an RX7 R.I. I got it, I think it was 93 or 94 call it 94, 30 years, three decades ago. Wow. Um, but the one I had, and I, at the time I could not afford an RA, RX7 RR. The only reason I got it was because I was in a situation where I worked at a dealership and we were a multi-franchise dealer and it was a situation where we got given very generous staff discount. I had the, I had the helmet painted by Dream Machine, custom paint, uh, in the UK, I'm presuming they still exist. I don't even know. I'll have to look them up. Um, the helmet was beautiful, on the arm design, and it stood me well. And I had it a few years. I probably ended up with another one. Gone through them. Um, big fan. Now we all know about safety, crash helmets, and we hear it on the social networks. People ask the question, don't they? They go. What's the best helmet? Who can recommend me a good crash helmet? And anybody who says to somebody, I suppose the, the answer is, get the best you can afford. Yeah, I get that. But they ultimately just get the one that fits the best. They've all got the correct certification these days. They can't afford not to because they'd be illegal. So safety-wise, shouldn't be an issue, really. The only thing that I... I'm a massive fan of, and a lot of people will say the same, is the double D fixing. That, for me, needs to stick and stay, and that should be, and I think is the gold standard, is the double D fastening. It's not complicated, proven to work, and doesn't fail. There's no weak links in that department at all. What I do question, though, with Arai in further departments, <coughs> excuse me, is innovation. Now, we've got a different type of fastening here, and I'm not sure it's the way to go as far as having a fastener concern when we've got such a proven winner in the double D. However, it does show innovation and invention from different manufacturers. You'll get a different fastener on the Shoei Neotech, I think, than you do with the Double D. I'll have to have a closer look at that. You get certain innovation in other brands that were missing from Arai. And I'm, this is the crux of this video, is that I'm now in a situation where I've had an Arai for 30 years, amongst other helmets, but I've always had an Arai for certain types of riding or, you know, for the commute, I'll use something different. And the reason I went for something different, I've got the HJC, I've had this couple of years now. That, for starters, why are we not seeing this sort of innovation in, a in an RI crash helmet? Why aren't RI doing a modular helmet like the Shoei Neotech? Why are we not seeing that type of innovation? And it frustrates me that they've... For all intents and purposes, stuck by the guns, which I appreciate, it's good, but this is 2024. Why are we not seeing a lot more innovation? That is, for, for all intents and purposes, the same helmet that it always has been. Slight different. Every year you might get different colours, the odd vent change, but nothing massively innovating and it frustrates me and I'm, I am questioning now why if I wanted a new XD5 which is your latest RI adventure helmet in Australia I'm paying eleven, twelve hundred dollars approximately when I can pay 300, 350 for an LS2 Explorer the MX701 I'm holding this because I'm impressed with it. It also has a sun visor that comes down. It's got 
beautiful detailing. It takes a pin lock visor. It comes with a pin lock visor. It comes with a box full of goodies, bags, pin lock visor. It even comes with like a, a sponge thing that you blow up so you can sit it on it to work on it. All for that money, it is utterly ridiculous. And the reason I like this and the reason I'm interested in it is because I've stripped it down and I put it back together. The reason I did that is because it's my wife's, it's Chantal's new helmet and she wanted me to swap all the cardo gear and uh, the audio stuff from her old helmet, from her old LS2 helmet. And this impressed me. I used to work on cars for a living. Um, apprentice mechanic, if you like, and a vehicle body repairer and one of the standards that you'd find on cars that you'd you'd get a grip of what the quality of the build was when you strip something down and put it back together and it goes back together just how the manufacturer intended and i get that same build quality ridiculous as it seems from a 350 fifty dollar helmet this stripped out and went back together actually better than the xd4 when i installed the cardo and that speaks volumes to me as to the, and if you can look closely at this thing, it is absolutely, the finish is absolutely spot on. I cannot fault, I can't fault the internals, I cannot fault the padding, the cushioning. If anything, it needs a double D fastener, but that's just for me, really. I don't think it needs anything fancier. But the build quality of that for $350 was mind blowing. I could not believe it how good it was and I was that impressed I've got a black one in here I bought one I went out tried it on did it zoom ahead yes perfectly so what I've done I've bought one a future video I'm going to show a strip down and an install of my Cardo intercom system like I've done with Chantal's here and I'm going to do it on this helmet in a future video and then I'm going to give you some more feedback on what I feel about this helmet now with that in mind I will talk back now about the RI. I'm going to go back to the RI as to why there is one reason you should actually wear it and keep one. And a lot of it now, it's sort of, I'm liking it to a pair of good training shoes for running. I'm a long distance runner of old and ultra marathons, etc. And the, the, the standard of footwear would give you an idea as to how good your footwear was. And the, the thing what you'd often say is, did I feel my feet? Were they an issue on this run? And if you've got a good pair of training shoes, your feet never come into it. It's more about nutrition, and it's more about energy, and your legs might hurt because you're running a long way. But if your feet are in good shape, and your footwear's in good shape, and you don't notice them, this is what I'm coming to, you don't notice it you know your shoes are good because they're a non-entity in your head that's something that i discussed with a riding colleague and mate a couple of weeks ago i was out for a ride and uh mick he had just bought himself an xd4 and the reason he got the xd4 is because it's last year's model now isn't it he got it about 800 dollars 750 800 dollars and he said to me, having come from a, a, a lesser brand, it wasn't an LS2, I think, it, I can't remember what it was now, but it, it's, a, it's a T7 owner and rider of great repute. He's very well known, knows locally, and he knows his stuff. And he said, the only thing that is now a, a plus point on the RI is that you can wear it all day and you'd not even notice it. And it goes back to the training shoes thing. If you're going to be riding all day, you can take a RI helmet off and you don't, your head don't go, ah. That can't often be said about other helmets. The RI is an all day lid. You'd never even notice it and it wouldn't be a chore putting it back on either. You'd just not notice it. I don't know whether that's going to be the case for the LS2 or even the HJC. What you get with an RI is that amount of plushness that you don't even know you're wearing it they're that good that's the only thing that for me at the moment is keeping me interested in the ri range and it speaks a lot of volumes if you're a long distance rider and you're touring all day yes i can see the benefit to it but i go out for four or five hours 
I'm sure I'm going to be comfortable in my new LS2. So I'm going to be testing the new system out. I'm going to be not replacing this Arai, which is due, with another Arai for now. I want Arai. I want somebody to tell me why we're not doing this. Why in 2024 we're not seeing innovation from Arai. Why they're not doing anything. That interior, all this stuff, is the same, exactly the same as what it was 30 years ago. That's the same stuff. And it's the same system. And it just comes out too easy. It's a bit tired as this helmet, but that is not a great interior. And it's not compared to this stuff. It, it just comes apart, goes back together, but it just doesn't feel like it's doing the job. And it doesn't feel secure. The, the helmet obviously is, but this stuff, I mean, it's just $1,200 for a new one of these. And it's just... I don't think it should be showing that level of wear at this age. And there's no innovation in the last 30 years. It's just the same helmet that it's always been. What's your thoughts? Am I right with RI? Should they be looking at a modular? Should we be looking at having these visors? Or should I be spending another $800 on top of what I've already spent? Just to get an RI. I can't see it, not at the moment.